This video is about mean and standard deviation. For problem number one, we are to calculate the mean and standard deviation for these data sets. Let's <clears throat> learn how to do this using our TI-30 XS multi-view. You're going to want to hit the data button and it pulls up a screen like this. And uh, we'll just take these numbers and start typing them in. So 14, 15, 18, all right, 14, 15, 18, 20, 23, 18, 20, 23, 18. Now we will hit second, stat, all right, so second, and then the data button. We want one variable statistics, so I'll just hit enter. And I do want list one and frequency one. So just hit enter like three times until you get to here. Now, this uh, option number two, x bar is 18. This is the mean. So the mean is 18. All right? And you can just put x bar because that is the mean. Now, um, okay, so just maybe make a note to yourself. The mean is x bar. The standard deviation is given by this little symbol like this, all right? It is a lowercase sigma, and that's standard deviation. Um, you will find standard deviation right here. It's uh, option number four, and that's three. All right, and that's how you do it. So we'll just do the same thing for set B. Now, when you go to your calculator, you got this list already there. Obviously, you want to delete this. If you hit the data button again, it shows up with this option, and you can uh, clear list one by just hitting enter right now. And then you're uh, up and running. So 41, 45, 34. Okay, that was completely wrong. It was 41, 45, 34, 45, 46, 47, and 50. Again, we will hit second data for the stat menu above, and I will hit enter one, two, three, four times to get here. X bar is my mean, 44. And my standard deviation is item number four, which is 4.78. Okay, number two. The cost of a can of Coke in six different shops are 47, and this P stands for pence. All right, I know that because I saw it later in the thing, so clearly this worksheet is of British origin. So 47 pence, 49 pence, 50 pence, etc. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of these costs. Well, we're just going to do the same thing we did up here. All right, so here I've hit the data button and I've typed in this data. All right, and once again, I will just hit second data for the stat menu. Enter four times. The mean is 47. All right, because that's the X bar. And the standard deviation is uh, 2.31. All right, number three, we have the price, prices of um, bags of sugar. And again, we're calculating the mean and standard deviation. So once again, I will just hit the table button on my calculator. I'm, I mean the data button on my calculator. If I hit data again and enter, I can clear that out. So 86, 88, 84.
79, 81, 86. Okay. And once again, I hit second data. Enter, 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 enter. The mean is 84. Okay, and the standard deviation is um, 3.11. All right, for part B, in six different shops, the same bag of sugar has a mean price of 87 pence and a standard deviation of um, 5.2 pence. Make two comparisons between the prices in the two sets of shops. Well, we have these pieces of information, all right? Um, these six prices are from um, one set of shops. We'll call those shops A. And um, this mean price and this standard deviation, we'll call this set B. And in fact, I shouldn't say shop A and shop B. So that makes it sound like one store. Um, this is set A and set B. So, um, well, set B has a higher mean price, 87 versus 84. Okay? So that's one comparison we can make. Set B has a higher mean price. Um, it also has a higher standard deviation. All right, set B has a higher standard deviation. Um, not enough space. Oh, I'll squeeze in here. Standard deviation. Okay, um, higher standard deviation means that um, in set B the prices show more variation. In fact, um, maybe they want us to say that instead of just saying a set B has a higher standard deviation. Um, maybe we should say something about variation because that's what standard deviation tells us. Um, so set B prices are more varied. Okay, and again, higher standard deviation tells us that um, this set has more variation, more highs and lows. Okay, um, number four. The marks of seven pupils in an advanced higher maths exam were brr, those are the seven scores. Calculate the mean and standard deviation. All right, I think I'll do this off camera this time because we've done it enough times, but I'm just going to type these into my calculator and um, use it to get the uh, X bar and the standard deviation. So the mean turned out to be 73 and the standard deviation was 15.6. All right, now, another group of seven people sat for the same exam, had a mean of 78, and a standard deviation of 3.2. <clears throat> so let's compare. Um, well, the first group, you know, we can call them group A, had a mean of 73. The second group had a mean of 78. Okay, so one thing I can say is that group B um, had higher scores. All right, group B typically has higher scores based on the higher mean. 
Um, another comparison. Let's look at the standard deviation, see how they compare. All right, so we have standard deviation of 15.6 compared with a standard deviation of 3.2. All right, well, group A um, with the standard deviation of 15.6, uh, um, those scores show um, a lot more variation based on the standard deviation. So that's what I will say based on that, all right, group a scores uh, show more variation. Okay. They must have more highs and lows. And you can see that, um, you know, we have A's with the 90 and the 93, um, all the way down to a low F here with the 43. So we, you see we do have highs and lows here. With a standard deviation of 3.2, that means um, if we had a list of those scores, they would be um, much closer to the mean of 78. All right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to see um, two A's along with uh, this uh, as well as F's. Um, they're probably all uh, in the B, C range, uh, hovering close to 78. All right, anyway, let's take a look at number five. A gardener grows tomatoes in his greenhouse. The temperature of the greenhouse in Celsius is recorded every day at noon for one week. And these are the scores. So let's uh, go ahead and type these scores into the calculator. Remember that we'll hit the data button to bring this up. Hit the data button again and enter. We'll clear out whatever's in there. And then we will just start typing. So 18, 21, 24. Seventeen, twenty-three, fourteen, and sixteen. Okay, we need to calculate the mean and standard deviation. So we can just hit second data to get to the stat menu and hit enter four times. One, two, three, four. So there's the mean, x bar equals 19. And uh, the standard deviation is uh, 3.5 approximately. Okay, so for best growth, the mean temperature should be 20 degrees, give or take 5 degrees. Okay, so translating that 20 minus 5, of course, is 15. 20 plus 5 is 25. So it should be um, for the best growth between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius. And the standard deviation should be less than 5. Are the conditions in the greenhouse likely to result in best growth? Um, yes, 19 is within this range. And 3.5 uh, standard deviation is less than 5. Problem number 6. The number of points scored by an American football team over 7 matches were brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
So we will hit second data and enter four times. So there's our mean x bar equals 24. And our standard deviation is approximately 4.9. All right, um, number seven. The number of pupils in seven third year classes in the secondary school are brat. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of the class sizes. So once again, let's type this data in our calculator by hitting data. If you hit data again and enter, it will clear list one. So we've got 25, 24, 28, 22, 24, 30, and 22. Okay, so we will hit second data and enter four times. So there's our mean, x bar equals 25. And our standard deviation is approximately 2.8. All right, in the same school, uh, the mean and standard deviation of the number of pupils in a in seven fourth year classes are twenty two and four point four. Okay, so that's the mean, that's the standard deviation. Make two comparisons. Well, the two comparison comparisons are supposed to come from the mean, comparing the means, and then comparing the standard deviations. So um, the mean we we are talking about class sizes, so. Looking at these two means, is it the uh, s the third year classes or the fourth year classes um, that have a higher class size? Well, the third year classes have a mean class size of 25 compared with uh, only 22. So we can say that the third year classes have a higher class size. Okay, now let's compare based on the standard deviation <clears throat> and remember what standard deviation tells us. So for the third year, we're looking at <clears throat> 2.8 and uh, for the fourth year classes, we're looking at standard deviation of 4.4. Um, so the uh, fourth year classes have a higher standard deviation. That means their class sizes very more, all right? Or I, if I wanted to talk about the third year class sizes, I, I could use words like consistent. Um, to I could say the um, third year class sizes are more consistent, meaning they're closer to being the same all the time. All right, so you can say any one of those two things uh, referring to the standard deviation. So I'm going to say so I can say the fourth year class sizes are more varied. Or I could have said that the third year class sizes are more consistent. All right, moving on to number eight. Scientists are studying the differences between crocodiles and alligators. The lengths of second cro seven, uh, sorry, the lengths of six crocodiles are recorded in feet. The results are shown below. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of these lengths. Well, to the calculator. 
hit the data button, hit the data button again, hit enter, now we've cleared it out. So I'm just going to type all these into the calculator, starting with 18.2, and I'll just continue to type them all in. So here I have them all typed in. And I will hit second data, and I'll hit enter four times, one, two, three, four. So there's my mean, x bar equals 19.9. And the standard deviation is approximately 2.1. Okay. Now, all right, so the uh, lengths of six alligators are recorded. The results give a mean of, uh, you know what, I'm seeing the units, and that's reminding me. We we need to put units on these things so I should say a uh, mean of 19.9 feet and standard deviation of what was it 2.1 yeah of 2.1 feet anyway so um, make two valid comparisons between the lengths of the crocodiles and the alligators all right, so let's start by comparing the means. So I've got um, the crocodiles had a mean length of 19.9 feet, whereas the alligators had a mean length of only 16.8 feet. So based on that, the, um, I would say that the crocodiles are longer. the crocodiles are longer than the alligators alright that's based on a comparison of the mean length and uh, now I will compare them based on the standard deviation so the crocodiles had a standard deviation of 2.1 feet whereas the alligators had a standard deviation of 1.85 feet so the lower standard deviation means that the lengths of the alligators are closer to being the same thing. They're more consistent. All right. Um, so in other problems, I've looked at the higher standard deviation, and I've said things like, um, well, this higher number means more variation. OK, higher highs and lower lows. Um, but this time, I'm going to say it the other way so you can get used to it. Um, the lower standard deviation means more consistent. All right, consistent is the best word to use. Um, closer to being the same all the time is what consistent means. So that's what I'm going to write next. All right, so there you go. The lengths of the alligators are more consistent. Uh, the, those lengths are closer to the mean. Okay, um, number nine. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of ten numbers where um, this means that the sum of the numbers um, is 180 and this means that the sum of the numbers squared is 3,356. So from now on, understand that when you see this letter that sort of looks like a weird E, this is a capital Greek letter sigma. And it means sum. All right? So it means um, you're adding up a bunch of values. And in this case, we're told that we're adding up 10 values, and uh, it has to equal 180. Um, we don't know what the numbers are, but that's okay. If we add up 10 numbers and get 180, um, if we divide by 10, that should give us the mean. Okay, so indirectly, they're giving us that the mean is 18. All right, if you add up all the numbers and divide by how many you have, 
180 um, divided by 10 um, is 18. So they're giving us that the mean is 18. Okay, so we calculated the mean. Now we just need to, to um, somehow from this figure out what the standard deviation is. So for this to make sense, um, we have to go back and understand how to calculate standard deviation by hand. We've been doing it only on the calculator um, so far. So let's go back real quick and look at the very first problem, problem number one. And um, let's figure out how we could find this standard deviation of three uh, by hand. So looking at the black screen, so here's the, the data. Um, the first thing you need to do to uh, calculate the standard deviation by hand is you need to know what the mean is. All right. So of course, if I wanted to find the mean of these numbers, um, I will add them up and I will divide by um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I will add them up and divide by 6. So let's add these numbers up and see what we get. All right, so the sum of all these numbers, so I'm calculating the mean, the sum of all these numbers is 108, and now I'm dividing by 6. So of course, if I do that, I'm going to get 18. Okay, so that's why the mean is 18, all right, which is hold on, which is what we got right here. Now, to find the standard deviation, um, you have to do two things. Um, so we're finding the standard deviation by hand. The, f um, the first thing you need to do is find the difference between the data and the mean. Okay, for all of these. Um, so I'm doing 14 minus 18 and 15 minus 18, all right? So 14 minus 18, that would be negative 4. Um, and uh, 15 minus 18, that's negative 3. 18 minus 18 is 0. 20 minus 18 is 2. Um, 23 minus 18 is 5. And again, 18 minus 18 is zero. All right, so you find all the differences. Um, and then what you do is you square these. All right, so we're gonna take these differences and we're going to square them. So if I do that, um, I'm gonna get 16 um, and nine and zero and four and 25 and 0. Now if I take the average of these I'm going to get something called the variance. Alright, so the symbol for variance is sigma squared, this lowercase sigma squared. Okay, and that's going to be the sum of these squares, okay, which I'll write this way, um, divided by however many you have, all right? So in this case, it's going to be the sum of the squares here um, divided by 6, because that's how many I've got. Um, but in general, I'll call it n for the number of um, elements that we have. So just focusing on this. So that tells me that the variance is going to equal, now if I add up all these, what do we get? I get 54. And of course, like I said, there are six elements, so it'll be 54 divided by six. That's why the variance is nine. Okay, now the standard deviation um, is gonna be the square root of this, and it makes sense. Uh, because the standard deviation is just sigma, all right, not squared. So it makes sense that if I want the standard deviation, of course I'm going to take the square root of both sides. 
okay and then that's going to give me that my standard deviation is 3 okay and just taking a quick look back that's how we got the standard deviation of 3 now relating it back to the problem on which we were actually working they're giving us the sum of the squares okay so remember what we just did um, the variance you know um, which is like the standard deviation squared is equal to the sum of the squares divided by n where n is how many elements you have um, in this case n is 10 so we know that um, so we can do this calculation we can say the variance is um, the sum of the squares you know divided by how many we have okay um, but we can do this so because we know that the um, variance and uh, they gave us this number so that's uh, 3,356 and we know that there are 10 okay so that tells us that the variance um, dividing by 10 you just move the decimal point over one time so we don't need a calculator for that that's 335 point six okay so then the standard deviation is going to be the square root of this all right because the standard deviation is just sigma not sigma squared so we will just take the square root of both sides okay so that is going to give us our standard deviation will be the square root of 335.6 Okay, so that is 18.3. All right, so that uh, we had to, we've been using the calculator, so there may be questions where you have to actually know how to calculate the uh, mean and standard deviation by hand to answer the question. So. Um, you're allowed to use a calculator, but that does not let you off the hook. So please make sure that you understand this process. Uh, again, just a quick summary. If you want to find the standard deviation, um, say here's the data right here. First you find the mean, then you subtract the mean from all the data, and then you square those. Um, and then to get the variance, you do the sum, you do the average of these. Okay, and whatever you get, that's, that's uh, the standard deviation squared is the average of the squares. So you have to take the square root to get the standard deviation. All right, and the standard deviation squared is called the variance. Okay, that was a lot of information for that problem. All right, here's the last one. This video is quite long. Um, but it all goes together, so I couldn't really break it up very well. But last one. The cost of an MP3 player in six different British shops is right here. Calculate the mean and standard deviation. Once again, we will put these values in the calculator. Okay. Um, yeah, why not use the calculator where, where we can? So we'll hit the data button, hit the data button again, hit enter to clear it out, and now we get to type in 66, 55, 70, 53, 61, 55. Okay, I will hit second data and enter four times. So I have a mean of 60 pounds. All right, that's money, British money. So I have a mean X bar is equal to 60. Um, I guess I should make that 
fancy symbol. Okay, so mean of 60 pounds and a standard deviation. of 6.3, got to round up, of 6.3 pounds. All right, in six different Italian shops, the same MP3 player has a mean cost of 55 pounds and a standard deviation of 2.6 pounds. Okay, make two valid comments comparing the MP3 three player in Britain and it Italy. Um, okay, so as we've done before, we our first comparison will be based on the mean. So let's compare this mean of 60 with a mean of 55. So obviously, um, 60 pounds is uh, more expensive. So um, the MP3 player is more expensive in the British shops. So um, let's write that down as our first comparison. So there you go. The MP3 player is more expensive in the British shops. And of course, I'm basing that on the mean price. Um, notice how I'm not just saying that the mean is higher. Put it in context. Say it's more expensive. OK. Um, now let's compare based on the standard deviation. So let's see, in the British shops, we had the standard deviation of 6.3 pounds versus the Italian shops had a standard deviation of um, 2.6 pounds. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say this actually two different ways. Looking at the higher standard deviation, I could say that um, the prices in the British shops have more variation. That's one way to say it. Higher standard deviation means more variation. So there you go. The prices in the British shops are more varied. All right, There are more variety, high, um, more highs and lows. Um, but you can say that the other way, if you look at the lower standard deviation, that means that the prices in the Italian shops are more consistent. It's probably the uh, easiest word to use there. Okay, so I'm just going to write that as well. This is just a, you don't need to write both of these, but I'm showing you both versions so you're comfortable. So there you go. The prices in the Italian shops are more consistent. All right, this pink version and the green version really mean the same thing. All right, here endeth the lesson.